everyone. Uh, welcome to this week's video. Today's going to be a little bit of a tip trick style video, also mixed in with a tutorial. Um, it's really going to be all about natural, no makeup makeup. Um, so more of like an everyday slap it on kind of a look that doesn't look like you're actually wearing makeup. Um, so that's the intention. I'm going to be hitting a few kind of tips, tricks. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, I kind of wasn't thinking um, and off camera already put on my SPF. By the way, if you guys aren't using SPF, you really should be. Um, don't care how your skin is normally, how much sun you're getting, use an SPF. Um, even like blue light from your screens, that can damage your skin and certain SPFs can prevent that. Um, so I put on my Supergroup Unseen Sunscreen um, and it also is a really good primer, so I'm not even going to prime. Um, so I put that on first. Next thing I'm gonna use is my IT Cosmetics CC Cream. It is technically considered full coverage, but I don't use a lot of it and little goes a long way, so it does tend to have a a thinner finish depending on the application. Um, so what I'm actually gonna do, and by the way, the color I'm using is medium. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and literally just go with my hands. I've noticed that when I use my hands versus utilizing, you know, a sponge or a brush or anything like that, you know, I tend to get a little bit more of a natural finish versus when I don't. And you can see it is a little bit more full coverage, but again, I'm making sure to spread it out evenly. Make sure I get those eyelids. You guys can tell, obviously I have lots of freckles. They are starting to fade, um, but I do still have lots of freckles and I wanna make sure that they are evenly covered the same amount everywhere. So I think we're good there. Just gonna take a little bit down my neck. If you guys don't do that, by the way, Regardless of tinted moisturizers, CC creams, BB creams, foundation, whatever it is, if it is adding color to your overall complexion in your face, make sure you take it down your neck. Okay, and just to kind of make it a little bit more subtle, I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my damp beauty blender and kind of just blend it out a little bit so it's a little bit more natural again. I also forgot to mention before I started this video, I did soap my brows to fluff them out a little bit. Um, so you can kind of, if you if you are used to my face and you've watched my videos, you can probably tell they look a little bit thicker than normal and that is why. It is one of the tricks that I utilize to get more natural looking brows um, that are fuller so you don't have to add color, but you can make them and shape them. Um, without adding any color or product to them. Okay, so I think that's good. Now, first, I guess now it's second because I did a give a tip already. Um, so second tip trick here is going to be adding concealer onto your complexion um, in a way that is natural and works well with a light coverage, tinted moisturizer, foundation, whatever it may be. Um, the concealer I'm using is my Rare Beauty Concealer in 210N. Um, but the application of concealer for, I guess, a more natural look is pretty similar to what you technically should be doing anyways when you utilize concealer. I like to go a little heavy with my concealer because I want extra, extra full coverage on my entire face. But when you're trying to keep it simple, what you really want to do is really one dot on the inner corner here below the eye where it tends to be darker. A little line up this way, that's not so much a line, my doe foot is not helping me, um, to really extend the eye. If you have dark spots or um, busted capillaries around the nose, you want to get there. I don't really, but I'm just going to give you guys an idea of what that would look like. Um, and then beyond that, that's really all you need. So if you, but again, if you have certain areas that get red, maybe you have, you know, redness in your chin, you might want to dab there a little bit, or if you have just target spots from acne breakouts or what, whatever it may be. You might want to dab, but if you're going to do something like that, let me just I'll pick my chin. You want to get a very small amount. So like literally that much 
on that on that concentrated area because again you don't want to get too eccentric with it so I'm gonna go ahead here and okay once you've gone ahead and put the concealer on your face you want to go ahead and blend it out so where I usually start is bottom up so like again, my, my little fake dot down here I'm just gonna blend that out as needed then the nose make sure again that you're using a damp beauty blender especially if you want a more natural look because um, it'll blend much more smooth that way so I'm gonna go ahead now around the nose and I'm actually gonna bring it up because I tend to take all product off my nose because I rub it a lot so why not But the eyes, as we kind of hinted at earlier, are the most important part. So typically, the easiest way for me is to start on the inner corner and blend that out towards our light at the end. So start in, dab, very lightly, and then work my way out this way. Now you'll notice that you get to a certain point and you can see you know, you don't have anything up on the eyelid, you have a little bit below. So what I'll usually do is kind of blend that out evenly. So you guys see that? So you start in the inner corner, blend down, and then up. And then if there's a little excess, kind of blend it evenly to make sure that there's nothing kind of harsh along the eyelid. So same thing on the other side. Okay, that's it. Super easy very minimal amount of product. Um, I don't typically utilize powder because that overly mattifies the face, makes it look unnatural. Um, so what I will usually do is just move on to a little bit of like a bronzer or contour. So when it comes to the products that I've already had on my face, obviously they are liquid. And with not using a powder to set it all, I have a lot of, I just don't like, I'm gonna put out that. I don't like going in with a powder contour or powder bronzer at that point because you have a hard time blending when you're putting powder onto a not fully dried out surface. Um, so what I'll usually do is go in with something liquid to continue that kind of consistency on my face. Um, so what I'm gonna use now is my ColourPop. It's actually a concealer also, but it's a very dark one, it's in deep tan. I use this to really contour my face um, when I wanna use like a liquid product. Um, typically, if you want something a little bit more natural, you should go for a concealer that is two to three shades darker than your normal concealer shade, and that should do a very subtle um, contour. I like a little bit more of an aggressive contour, just it's one of my favorite things. Um, so I'm still going to try and keep it subtle, but I'm, just, I'm still going with my dark color here, guys. So if you are not into that, again, typically I would recommend two to three shades darker than your normal shade for your concealer. Um, to utilize for contouring. But again, I'm not doing that. So I'm just gonna do a few dots up here and I'll blend those down. I'm gonna get a little bit here, here, because I can't go without a nose contour. Just can't do it. Little bits up here. And a little along the chin kind of shape it a little bit there. So then I'm gonna go in now with my contour sponge. By the way, I do use two different sponges, one for dark, one for light. Um, so I'll go with my contour sponge and usually when I'm using my sponge to do a liquid contour and I've got spots all over my face, I'll usually start with the nose so I don't have too much product by the time I get there because that's a little bit more of a precise area for the contour. So I'm gonna go ahead and blend that out. Okay, once I'm done with the nose, like I said, always the nose first. Gotta go from most precise to the least precise. So I'm gonna go next to my forehead, which is, in my opinion, another area you, would, you wanna be pretty precise with when it comes to the contour. Um, by the way, how you contour is very, very dependent on your face shape in your bone structure. So what I'm doing on my face right now may not work for you, you know? Um, and if you have questions about exactly how to contour your your particular face, 
feel free to reach out and ask me. You can comment on this message or video or message me separately. I can't speak. Um, and I'd be happy to give you guys feedback specifically on your faces and let you know best, best spots to contour. Um, okay, last place, cheeks least amount of precision because it's such a big area. So you do want to start at the end because that's where we want the most concentrated and then just move our way in and up, in and up. And by the way, when you are contouring, you always, always, always want to lift, kind of curve at the end because that's going to lift your cheekbone and lift your face a little bit more. Um, and you're noticing I'm adding a little color to my ears. I just don't want any kind of harsh cuts there with the contour color and going into the ear. So you'll notice again, doing the same thing, starting, concentrating on the outside and then slowly coming in and up and in and up. And then drag it into the ear there as well. Um, sometimes if I have, there's really not a lot on the sponge, but a little bit of access, I'll kind of draw it along the jawline too, just for a little extra definition. And that's another area too, you know, I have a pretty, defined jawline, but if you don't, you can utilize the contour to really create a more defined jawline for yourself as well. Okay, um, next thing, and again, I'm sticking with liquid at this point because it's just much easier to blend liquid into liquid for a more natural look. Um, next thing I'm gonna go with is a liquid blush, or technically it's more of a cream blush. Um, it's the Ilia Color Haze. So it's a multi-use pigment. Technically you can use this for lips, eyes, and cheeks but I'm gonna go ahead and obviously just use this specifically on my cheeks. Um, I might, if I have a little extra, go a little bit in with on my eyes just for a little color, but I don't know that I will, so we'll see. Um, typically with this, what I do, and you can see the applicator is all squeeze and just dab right onto my face. Um, and then from there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blend with my fingers. So I'm gonna go ahead again, put it on the face first, and then once I have it on, just blend with my fingers. Okay. And by the way, I always start on the inside of the apples. I'm really, really, really into um, super rosy kind of flushed blush looks. Um, so I always love starting on the inside. But if you're not really into that, that type of look, start up top just like your contour and work your way down so it's a little bit more subtle towards the front and the center of your face. But again, this is just a personal preference of mine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it that way. And so I am getting a little bit of extra blush on my fingers. So I, as you saw, I went ahead with some on my nose, but I'm also gonna, like I said, dive in a little bit on the eyes too, but very subtly. Can't really tell, there's not a lot going on there. That's all. Um, next thing I wanna go on to is brows. So as I mentioned, I already soaked my brows to kind of fluff them up. So the only thing I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna keep it super duper simple, um, is add a little bit of tint. Um, so I have my Anastasia Beverly Hills Dip Brow Gel. Um, so all I'm gonna do is just very lightly brush that in to hopefully just fill in any gaps that I have. And I'm going in here with the color taupe. So again, just very, very light. Okay, that's all we need for the brows. Again, you can tell, fluffed, natural, not a lot going on, no harsh lines. It's exactly what we want for this look. Now, just because I completely did it off camera by accident, um, I did want to explain. So what I normally do with the soap, and I don't buy anything special, I really don't. I just use a normal face bar of soap. Um, I get my spoolie. I just use the back of my NYX, um, what is this, Precision Bow Pencil. Just the back of that, because I have a few of these. So I have one specific one, it's this this one that I use for this. Um, but I get it wet a little bit, not a lot. So I soak it technically, and then I dry it off on a towel so it's just barely damp. And then I just go back and forth on my soap bar, twisting and turning until this is com completely covered in soap. And then I just go and brush, 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 brush. It takes 
probably about five minutes before my brows finally start to hold because they are unruly. Um, I don't have a lot, but they are unruly and they don't like to go the direction I want them to. So it takes a bit of time, um, but you just keep, you know, brushing them out, brushing them out, brushing them out. And you'll start to notice as they start to stick that you'll have, you know, ones that kind of stand out at the top or the bottom. They're too long, they don't quite fit. So once you've really brushed everything out, then what I'll usually do is take the spoolie and come across the top and just smooth out the harsh lines on the bottom and the top to make sure that nothing is really standing out. And it doesn't look like anything is right now, but I'm still gonna go through those steps. Okay, Just again, so you guys can see what that looks like. That's how I create those brows. Um, Honestly, we're still going for a supernatural look, but mascara, I mean, you gotta, you gotta, kinda gotta do it. Can't, can't not do it. Um, so I, and I really, really do love mascara. It makes such a difference. Um, so what I usually do is curl first. So I'm gonna go ahead, curl. Once we're all curled, literally just going with the mascara and it doesn't need to be crazy. You don't need to, you know, go, go all in there, get them all clumped up. We want it to still look natural. Um, by the way, the mascara that I'm using is one that I love to use just on the daily, um, which is the Thrive Cosmetics Liquid Lash Extensions, mostly because it has orchid stem cell in it, which is supposed to help nourish your lashes. And honestly, my lashes need all the help they can get naturally. Um, so love this guy in the applicator. I mean, you guys can see um, it's a very good lash separator so I don't have to really worry as much about anything kind of clumping up and so it does for the most part create a very natural looking lash um, obviously if you get in there for a you know a few different layers it'll start to get clumpier and thicker and it'll be a little bit more obvious um, but I like to keep it as simple as possible so there we are again, just enough to kind of extend those lashes and add a little bit of definition and color without making it look too obvious. So obviously, I mean, you can, you can see the difference when they're side by side, but it's nothing super crazy. Um, usually I'll start with one eye top first, then the excess on the bottom and then move on to the next. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay. And now the other eye. Okay, and there we are with the lashes again, just enough to make them a little longer, give a little definition, especially if you have lashes like mine that are really light and basically invisible if you don't have something on them, um, gives you a little oomph there. Um, and the very last thing is just lips. So before I got started, because I have very, very dry lips, I already put on my Bite Beauty Agave Lip Mask. So this beauty, it's already on there. Um, I usually start with some sort of lip mask or chapstick. Um, I also love the Laniage, I don't know if you say that right. Um, their sleeping lip mask. I don't use that just for bed. I literally use that all day long. Absolutely love it. Some sort of chapstick or lip mask I always start with before I even start my makeup so that it kind of really soaks in by the time I get to my lips. But if you don't have that problem, don't worry about it. Just another fun tip for those of you who may have truly chapped dry lips. Um, and the next thing I'll do is really just go in with a lip, a lip liner that's not super dark. Um, so this one is the Lawless Forget the Filler Definer Liner in Honey Rose. So there she is. Um, so I'm literally just going to take this and not go around the entire lips. Just the Cupid's Bow. Biggest reason, by the way, that I usually hit the Cupid's bow is because mine is not even. One is a little pointier than the other, so I like to balance them out, make them a little bit more symmetrical. The other place I like to blend in with that liner is bottom corners and upper corners. That's it after that. So. So once I have the line in, just kind of smack those lips first. And then what I'll do is I'll go in with my Kosa Sport. It's basically like a tinted, tinted balm. Um, what do they actually call it? Hyaluronic lip balm, but it is tinted. 
very lightly tinted so this is this is what the color looks like but it doesn't go on harsh so I just it's literally a lip balm with a little bit of color so I like to throw this in just for a little bit I got a little bit of extra color um, and this is also another I guess in a sense this is a, this is what I like to call a hidden secret actually um, absolutely phenomenal for dry lips again I have very very dry lips like to the point where they are chapped almost all the time I have a terrible habit of biting at them and nibbling at my lips all the time because of how chapped and flaky they get it's terrible um, so again I have to have some sort of lip balm chapstick on almost all the time um, but I've been like that my entire life and obviously there are some products that you know they sit on the surface and they don't actually do anything beneficial for your lips other than keep them from being able to hydrate themselves um, and then there are products like the three that I mentioned the Lania J um, sleeping lip mask bite beauty lip agave agave lip mask um, and this beauty that really you put them on not only do they last for hours but they're also really nourishing the lips underneath so that even when the product is gone you're not dealing with immediate drying and flaking and cracking which is what my life was like before these products um, so if you do have dry lips highly recommend one of those three and everything I talk about will be linked or tagged in the caption of this video um, so you can you can find them there but absolute one of my faves so, so obviously the sleep um, lip sleeping mask and the agave lip mask are both more clear products um, bite does have some tinted versions of that but they're pretty subtle this is one of my favorites mostly because of the fact that even though it is very lightly tinted and subtle it still gives color so it's very very handy because it works almost like a lipstick while also being one of the most amazing lip balms ever um, and as I mentioned it's called their hyaluronic lip balm so obviously it has hyaluronic acid in it which is an amazing amazing um, hydrating product for skincare in general it helps your body to really retain moisture better um, in your skin in general so that also includes your lips um, so it really helps to retain that moisture and not dry out so that's why this one is so amazing. But again, Kosa Sport, we got the Bite Beauty Agave Lip Mask, and I don't have it with me, it's in the other room, but my Lange um, Lip Sleeping Mask. Um, okay, that's it. That's the look. Here you are. Again, natural, no makeup, makeup look. Really supposed to be subtle. Not trying to be in your face, but you know, basically just brighten up, touch up, and, and slightly enhance um so again from start to finish i have my super goop unseen sunscreen got my it cosmetics you but better cc cream and that was in medium got the rare beauty concealer in 210n 210n um color pop concealer is the one i used for my contour and this was in deep tan so very dark color you can see there uh, for the blush we had the Ilia color haze multi-use pigment there she is um, in before today so that was the name of the color before today and for my brows again I just used normal bar soap um, and then I also used the Anastasia Beverly Hills dip brow gel in taupe um, for my mascara it was the Thrive Cosmetics Lash Extensions liquid lash extensions totally showing that to you backwards um, got the liner which was that lawless in honey rose and then that Kosa sport and this color was called pulse so I used pulse the other one I really like is rush that's a really pretty one they're both very mauve -y tones um, by the way, Kosa Sport also has a completely clear one too. So if you really like the formula, but you don't want that tint or color at all, they do have a clear version as well that you can use, which is just as amazing. Um, that's all I have for you guys today. That's it for my video. Thank you for tuning in. If you have other things that you would like to see, any other tips, tricks, looks, any of that kind of stuff, feel free to reach out and let me know. I would love to give you guys that information. Um, I do have a whole backlog of um, tips, tricks that you guys did recommend um, when I asked a little bit ago on Instagram stories. So I am gonna slowly work my way through those, uh, mixed in obviously with different look tutorials. But if there is something that you really, really, really wanna see, just let me know. Comment, message me, whatever you want. 
feel free to reach out and let me know. On one last thing, for those of you still watching and still tuned in, I am planning on doing a live on, probably on Instagram, um, in the future at some point. I haven't really picked a date or time, but what I wanna do is a live of a makeup tutorial, but also kind of a QA. and a So I wanna have the questions that you guys have for me ready to go in advance so I can answer them while going through that makeup look basically a two-in-one. Um, it can be get to know me questions, it can be questions about makeup, skincare, anything you really want. So if you guys have questions you would like for me to answer on that live, please, please, please um, send them to me in advance. Obviously you can also ask them on the live, but it gets a little bit challenging when trying to do your face and look at those questions coming in. So um, if you can send them in advance, would totally appreciate that because I'm sure it would make things a lot easier in general, um, especially because it's going to be my very first life. So again, if you guys have questions you want me to answer on that, please send them my way. And otherwise, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Thanks for tuning in and I'll talk to you next week. Bye.